The calendar flips to December and with it a rivalry series ensues. It's the Purdue Boilermakers traveling west to battle the Illinois Fighting Illini. Both teams back in action in this interdivisional matchup for the first time in three weeks. Good evening everyone from the Big Pond in Champaign, Illinois. Live on the Illini Hockey Network and on WPGU 107.1, Champaign's alternative. On the call, I'm George Corey. And let's start with the Illini entering this one, one game short of 500 in John O'Pilka's first season at the helm. Last we saw them three weeks ago, they split the series against McKendry, and it has been more of the same for them. They've received a lot of their goals from transition hockey and odd man rushes, less so from the set offense, and their biggest weakness is still clearing the puck. Slow and sloppy at times, and that in turn has caused a lot of turnovers and goals for opposing teams. So nothing new under the sun for Illinois, you could say. The drivers behind the results of past games have continued to rear their heads in multiple ways. Meanwhile, for this Purdue team, which started nine and two, but have dropped three of their last four, a few things in common with their rivals. A bit slow to clear the puck, and like Illinois, they have struggled in particular against faster teams. Keep an eye on that tonight. Where they differ are in things they do frequently and do well. They love to crowd the crease on defense. One guy in the slot and one guy on either end to make opposing offenses essentially earn it from long distance. They protect against the short shots. They make you earn it from the point. And they make heavy use of the saucer pass. Not really something you see a lot of in hockey teams in particular, but we've seen it a lot on the film for this boiler team this year. Heavy use of the saucer pass, whether to clear the defensive zone or to set players up from one seam to the other. That's worked well for them here halfway through the season. And it gives Illinois an interesting challenge in how to defend against that. Something to watch as well as the Boilers are led by a strong front line with plenty of scoring threats in Cole Theodore and Tyler Groen and the large framed Kane Pasquet in goal. As we get set for this one again, some updates personnel-wise. No Benjamin Toby. The captain continues to be sidelined for the Boilers, who have just made their way onto the ice. No Zane Burnside either. Had a quiet series against Lawrence Tech last time out. So a bit short-handed, but still for Purdue, a murderer's row of a top line tonight. In the aforementioned Groen and Theodore, combining with them is Will Torriani. And between that top line for Purdue, 49 goals over 100 points, and we're not even halfway through the season. Something to watch for sure, and some new lineups to start things off for Illinois as well, featuring Bailey McCarthy and Aiden Taylor. The upstart junior combining with a surprise in Taylor, getting the start for Illinois. And for more, and for the starting goalies, we go down to the ice. Brought to you by Skender, the starting lineups are the general contractors behind the premier construction experience. Visit Skender.com to learn more as we send it now to public address announcer Nick Miner for those starting lineups and the national anthem. Starting from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, Canada, 47th and 
Once again, the starting lineup is brought to you by Skender, the general contractors behind the premier construction experience. Visit Skender.com to learn more. Again, a phrase you'll hear me use multiple times tonight, a murderer's row of a front line in growing Theodore and Toriani. 49 goals already on the season between those three. Aiden Taylor and Bailey McCarthy, the surprise names for Illinois, getting the start alongside the mainstay at right wing, Peter Campisi. Starting goalies, some familiar names for both, but a bit of a surprise for Illinois. As much of that is the case as it is playing on Friday as opposed to Saturday, so there is that as well. Historically, the team has made more adjustments and has had a better game defensively in the second game of two. We'll see if they can provide Ben with some support tonight in the form of some goals as we are underway here on Rivalry Week. Alpi takes that one, flings it around, ends up in the trapezoid where Kane Pasquet will get a stick on it. Back the other way around, it was Slovic able to keep it in and send it too high. Bailey McCarthy chases that down for Illinois. Two men converge on it, pulled back out to Purdue. Moving quickly now, that's the aforementioned Groen on the near side. Fires in, save made, Karam's in the slot and deflected away by Campisi smartly there for Illinois. Illinois looks to clear, Purdue looks to hold on to it. Campisi with a poke check and that will get back to neutral ice. Abbreviated line change for both, now a full line change for both. And Illinois will control, it's Luke Alpi in his own doghouse, sends that around the near side boards. Pulled out to Atticus Elfer, he and Alpi will reset. Anthony Verasi trying to chase that one down. Instead, it's pulled back to Torin Frank, starting in defense for Purdue. He's harassed by Harrison Slovic, but pulled out to another black sweater. That's Evan Spadafora, and taken now. Back on the other side, getting pesky with the stick. That is Spadafora, trying to make something happen. Couldn't do anything there. Now back the other way from Joe Dorian. He gets a major hit on the boards. Free puck cleared by Bogdanov, and that will end up back for an icing. Already called his name a couple times tonight in goal for Purdue. It's Kane Pasquet, 6'2", 200 pounds, great frame, and really a long reach with the lower body alone that you'll see him display. He can cover end to end of the crease with a big frame. So for Illinois, he's gonna make Illinois elevate the puck tonight. Just with how big of a frame he has, a great body in there on goal for Purdue. Face off in the other side and bottled up by his counterpart. Pasquet entering this one 7-3 with a save percentage north of 900. The top man in net for the Boilers. Again, dropped three of their last four after starting the season hot. So they're looking to get back to into their groove, and as a matter of speaking, as that shot goes wide. Chase down for it. Dan Wessel fighting for it. He manages to keep it at the point, feed it in. Moving closer in on goal. Matt Vive has to navigate that through traffic. Can he finish the job? Yes, he can. Now he has it, gains the zone, forced to his left. Sends it in on goal. Edingen trying to take away that. And Illinois can keep it in. Sasha Matt Vive circles back, relegated to that near side corner. A few bodies cancel each other out. Now Bogdanov in front! And that shot does not go. Off the stick of David Edingen. Unable to handle that one right there for Illinois was Alex Leskai. Gives a line change for Purdue. Beautiful two-man game right there from Illinois that forced a wide open chance. And credit to David Ettingen. He elevated the puck just a little bit wide. Now Nick Anderson feeds it in. Illinois will go for a line change of their own. Fresh off that line change, trying to make contact, and he does. That's Steven Lucas. Nothing he can do there. Off the pad. Back the other way now. That's Patrick McDonough. He looks to clear and does. Anderson tried for the backhand. He'll backhand it again. Sent in by Andrew McLean, but right to a black sweater. Now back the other way. Alex Leskai looking to control. Has a few man on a six. Sends it around as he gets hit into the boards. A man still fighting for it. That's Ryan Kovitz, and Purdue controls. Three minutes into the game, and only the second stoppage in play. Both teams try to feel each other out. It's been a very quick game to start in these three minutes. 
as the face off now to the left of Pasquet, pulled out into the far side corner, Campisi fighting for that one. Still being fought for now. In the middle of that is Bailey McCarthy, although a one on two. He's still trying to make contact with it as Aiden Taylor comes to his aid. Campisi and Taylor playing a little two man ball before it's taken by Nash Cheslock. Unable to handle that one is Harrison Slovic, and now he'll have to corral it again. Cheslock on Slovic six. Nearly made him lose it there, but still able to hold on to it. Cheslock on his six, but Slovic still able to get through. Shot goes wide. Fed on back by McCarthy. No dice. Dangerous pass, but cleared after all of that. Now who can get to it first on the near side? Bailey McCarthy able to clear it. Takes a vicious hit into the boards. Purdue applying the physicality early as Joe Dorian now looks to do the same. Slovic sent around to Bogdanov on the near side. Feeds it in. Purdue also doing a good job forcing Illinois to the outside with a few exceptions as Bogdanov delivers a retaliatory hit on Jackson Graff. 50-50 puck battle pulled out to the slot. Briefly controlled by Purdue, but another fight for it again that will see it go back into the Illinois zone. Joe Dorian controlling now. Toriani sent in. Does not go. Right there, Atticus Helfer now controlling for Illinois. Cleared. Cleared and iced. Boy, you saw the chemistry right there from that influential top line for Purdue. Toriani feeding a beautiful pass right in there to Tyler Groen. And the first real point blank chance that Purdue has had into this game. Now four and a half in to the first period. A face off to the left of Missouri, pulled out to Purdue. Jake Pickett fires, that shot is elevated and too high. That one goes in as well. Now a few men converge on it. Pickett leading the charge. And now Joe Dorian for Illinois in the trapezoid. Backhand pass. Good intermediate passing here by Illinois. It's allowed them to gain the zone. Bogdanoff in, dash a shot off the pad. More intermediate passing on display there for Illinois. It gave them a good chance. Trying to keep it in there was Atticus Selfer. He could not. Now Anthony Verasi, the upstart. Underclassman gains the zone. Matt Vieb going in, collides with two black sweaters, shot wide. Trying to fight for it there and play whistle dead as he is still down. Tough hit right there, taken as he was able to hold on to that. We mentioned Anthony Verasi, the upstart freshman, increased his stock with his team. He was able to get it to Matt Vieb. And you could very well make the case, as you saw the collision right there, Matt Vive able to take that shot off the pass from Verasi. Alexander Matt Vive was already out for a significant amount of time for this team, and it showed. He's the team's leading centerman, most successful player on this team in terms of handling the faceoff for Illinois. So he was sorely missed earlier in the season, and the team, at least right now, able to dodge a bullet there as he's heading to the bench now. It appeared he called for a substitution. Matthew McDonald going into the game. And Matt Vive will be checked on, so Illinois not out of the woods just yet. As Gregory Eddingen set to take the face off, he wins it. McDonald flings it back into the Purdue zone. Oilers looking to clear. Torin Frank on the far side. Sends a beautiful pass around, but unable to handle that one right there. And an icing. That's a misplay that might keep Matthew Goring up at night as that was a beautiful pass from Torin Frank. And we'll reset back in the Boilermakers doghouse. Matt Vive back into the game for Illinois, so a green light there, all systems clear as he's set to take the face off. Pulled out now to the point, firing there is Slovic. He takes a hit as that one caromed back. Matt Vive goes down, delayed penalty coming for that. Might be a cross check, but it'll be a power play here for Illinois. They're able to hold on to the puck. Six on five briefly until Purdue can get a stick on it. Moving in, firing does not go right there. Matt Vive takes it back. Back to Alpi, six on five here for Illinois for the time being until a whistle. Fired back around, that's Slovic. Alpi a shot, unable to handle that. And now Purdue gets a stick on the puck. 
The call appeared to be a cross check there. And it will give the first penalty of the game. So Illinois on the power play here in the top line, led by Bogdanoff and Gregory Ettingen. Into the box for the Boilers, it's Dylan Franks. Six minutes into the game, Illinois will have five on four. Joining those aforementioned two for Illinois, it's Atticus Helfer, Nick Anderson, and Joe Dorian. Anderson and Helfer again, the two former defensemen that have since made the move up to left wing. And Dorian, the true defenseman in there for Illinois. Helfer manning things at the center of the ice, now feeds it to Ettingen. Able to get his stick in the way right there. The passing lane is Peyton Smith, and a nice play to kill some time. Atticus Helfer near side, looking to get it out, move to his right. Instead, he's looking to go in, moves to his left, fires. Still in front, still alive. And play stopped, the net dislodged. Joe Dorian tried to send that one the distance. And Dan Wessel didn't like that. 30 seconds into this Illinois power play, the first of the game for either team. Interesting look there by Atticus Helfer. The scouting report says he'll move to the middle of the ice, but instead he tried to take matters into his own hands and had a great screen there to aid him in that shot. Face off pulled to the near side corner. Nick Anderson fighting for it right there. Can Purdue clear it? No, it's taken away by Atticus Helfer. Helfer playing catch with Ettingen. Now Nick Anderson trying to move in, harassed by Peyton Smith. Trades places with Bogdanoff. Now Smith will try and harass him. Anderson fires, save made off the leg. And Purdue clears. A lot of bodies in front there, a lot of screening, multiple players there for Illinois right in on Kane Pasquet. He's able to respond nonetheless. 50 seconds left on the Illini power play. Helfer leading the charge, feeds it to his right. Now that's David Ettingen. Back to Atticus Helfer, goes to his left, his signature spot. David takes it now. Feeds it across to Sasha Matviv. Illinois in the umbrellas. Matviv fires, save made in the bread basket there. Alpi sent back around. And Purdue able to clear again. 30 seconds left on the man advantage for Illinois. And really their last chance to get some set offensive pressure here while they're still up five men to four. Matt V. harassed by Tyler Groen. He goes down, still able to hold on to the puck, still leading the way. Great recovery right there for the Russian as he gets through, fires, and that shot goes wide off the pad. Back to full strength as Purdue able to clear that one. Chasing it down, Harrison Slovic and an icing. So Illinois got plenty of chances, and there we saw the prestige of Kane Pasquet show for the first time in this game. Starting line back on the ice for Illinois. McDonald in the place of Campisi. Dorian plays the ricochet game, trying to find Matthew McDonald. That one caroms in. Rebound chance. Can't do anything there. And now a chance for Purdue, a two on one. Tyler Groen moving in. Fires. Save made off the right pad of Missouri. Back to Purdue. Fresh off the bench. Able to take that one and move in. Dylan Franks has it now before it's taken away by Bailey McCarthy. Campisi elevates that and clears. Face off now between Dylan Franks and Bailey McCarthy. One by the former, trying to move in quickly there. That one was elevated, but a beautiful save off the wrist there from Ben Mazurik. McCarthy gets shoved into the boards right there. Illinois still able to clear. Chase down now between Peter Campisi and Matthew Wheeler. Illinois able to hold on to it for the time being before it's controlled by the Boilermakers. Campisi harassing a man, he takes it away. Moving in now, unable to get stick to puck there. Matthew McDonald 
Purdue able to clear a one-on-one -on -one for the time being. Moving in Frank, great positioning right there by Harrison Slovic as that one went off of his skate. Big hit, centering pass, taken away, still being fought for in the trapezoid. Purdue still controls, pulled out to the point. Increasingly physical this game has become as that shot was a fan. Now McDonald moving in, shot goes wide. Golden opportunity there for Purdue as another one goes in. Still alive in the trapezoid, Illinois looking to control. 50-50 puck battle there in the near side corner. Anthony Varasi now pulled out to Purdue. There it is, the signature saucer pass controlled by Peyton Smith. Illinois wasting no time now. Long shift for both teams. Helfer moves in, pass deflected by Steven Lucas. Lucas has it now, it goes off his state. He gets it into the boards. Illinois able to control in neutral ice. Poke check there from Lucas. And now Alpi controls. Long shift right now for both teams. As we've hit the midway point of a scoreless first period, Illinois chips it in and gets their line change. Bogdanoff sends a man into the boards. Illinois looks to reset. Brought out to neutral ice. Ettingen goes right back in. A one on two, trying to hold onto it for the time being. Successful, but Nathan Dash throws it away. Saucer pass, there it is. Purdue trying to play the speed battle. Nick Anderson has to shove it away as that went close on goal. Dash, and now Matt Veeve. Matt Veeve sidesteps one man. Three on two here for Illinois. Feeds it in, David Ettingen, that doesn't go. Another pass there from Gregory, but bottled up by Pasquet. Great awareness right there by Greg Ettingen as he tried to feed that one in. Now the faceoff won by Matt Veeve, but controlled by Purdue. Taking that one is Cam Page. He gets hit along the boards. Illinois able to hold on to it though for the time being. Gregory Ettingen trying to control it in the trapezoid. Taken again by Page. He's trying to clear it. Sends a backhand that gets to neutral ice. Nick Anderson and Nathan Dash. Dash able to avoid one man. Can he avoid the next? No, he cannot as it's sent in around the boards. Great play there by Will Torriani. Back on the near side, Jake Pickett looks to clear. And he does. Some more bodies collide in neutral ice. Purdue controlling for the time being. Nick Anderson tried to lay the boom on one man. Now a chase down back in the Illinois side. Groen controls, feeds it to Toriani. Toriani gets leveled on the boards. Hard hit right there. Alexander Matveev takes it away and feeds it to the far side. David Ettingen off a line change for Illinois, feeds it to his brother Gregory. Gregory, odd angle, tried to feed it in right there. Great defense there by Torin Frank to take away that odd man rush for Illinois. Back the other way now, Tyler Groen. He's moving in, goes through one man, but too much traffic there. Good defense by Slovic and David Ettingen. He gets hit, Purdue able to hold on to it for the time being, still trying to fight for it. Beautiful play there by Evan Spatafora, but it costs the possession. Purdue was simply outnumbered right there. Spatafora played very well there. Unable to do anything on that to prolong that series for the Boilers. Eight minutes left here in a scoreless first period. Fanning on that, and it gives Purdue the possession. A feed inside, Spatafora wasn't able to do anything there. Lackadaisical pass off the skate of Alpi. Alpi trying to clear now, and back to neutral ice. Chase down for it. Alpi has it. Now Harrison Slovic. Matthew McDonald. Poke check, right to a black sweater. Spatafora, Bogdanoff harassing him. Purdue with some passes, but it goes through two black sweaters and an icing. Not a lot of whistles in this game on either side. Seven shots thus far for Illinois, five for the Boilers. Again, coming into this game for Illinois, it was more of the same and in multiple ways. Still getting a lot of their goals from rushes and transition hockey. We have seen more of the set in this game, and you can attribute that to the lone power play. They're still slow in clearing the puck. Granted, they've been quicker tonight, but still a weakness, you could say, for Illinois. A man goes down there, Atticus Helfer, Purdue with the possession on the near side. Back the other way now, Helfer fighting for it. Taking a hit there is Dan Wessel. Back the other way now. Nick Anderson controlling for Illinois. Sends a long pass over to Atticus Helfer. Now he has it. Going in the middle of the ice, avoids one man. 
but sends it right to a boiler. On goal, turned aside. Alexander Matviev now moving in for Illinois. Gains the zone, able to keep the puck in there. Fighting for that one, great defense there from Peyton Smith. Sends it back to the Illinois doghouse where it will be iced. Six and a half left in period number one. Another factor to consider for both of these teams, a litmus test for, the, for both of these teams has been the speed as it is for many teams in this sport. Usually the faster you are, the team you are that comes out on top. The faster team, the better team, usually. And it has been the case for both. So who will look to be the faster team? And Illinois has played very nicely when it comes to the speed tonight. A great adjustment made in the three week break since their last game. Unable to handle that pass right there. And Luke Alpi will chase it down. Line change for Purdue. Nothing of the sort for Illinois. Alpi plays the ricochet game. Right to Jake Pickett, feeds it back into the Illinois doghouse, where Ben Mazurik will move things around with his stick. Nearly dangerous there, but Gregory Ettingen takes it on the near side, stays on the outside, tries to feed it back in. A shot does not go off the pad, right back to Ettingen. Tries for a center, he scores! Unclear if that will stay the case, however, as the whistle was blown multiple times and the linesman delivered a signal with his right hand as if to show that it was waved off. Unclear as to if it is a goal for Illinois. They are talking things over with John Opilta on the bench for Illinois. Unclear again if this will stand. Nonetheless, a beautiful play right there. As an orange sweater fired a shot, it carried right back into the trapezoid where Gregory Ettingen was waiting for it. Then feeds a beautiful pass to David Ettingen right in front. And again, we talked about the big frame of Kane Pasquet. So what does Illinois do? They elevate the puck. Meanwhile, Aiden Taylor is heading towards the locker room on the other side of the ice. Unclear if it's injury related, unclear if it's procedural, unclear if it's an ejection, but he is heading back towards the locker room for Illinois. No sign yet if this goal will stand. Again, Gregory Ettingen was in the right place in the right time in the trapezoid and feeded a beautiful centering pass into his brother David. Chemistry that has lasted as long as the childhood backyard between those two. The younger David following in the footsteps of arguably this team's MVP last year, Gregory, and the two combined for what was originally a beautiful goal, what might not stand as a beautiful goal, a beautiful play nonetheless. Again, no word from the linesman yet, as now they are conversing on the Purdue side. A free timeout for both teams meanwhile, as the administration in the building cleared the teddy bears from the ice that were thrown. Still unclear if it is a goal. Still unclear. Meanwhile, Purdue has only skated out four. And with the faceoff being in the Purdue zone, you can pretty much conclude that that will not be ruled a goal. We have not received an official wording as to why yet. Whether it's penalty related, whether it's a dislodging of the net, we have not received official word why this goal has been called back. That being said, Purdue skates out only four, and Illinois is on a power play here for the next two minutes. Atticus Helfer fires off the post. That was nearly a ball don't lie moment right there for Illinois. Gregory Ettingen. Now Atticus Helfer feeds it to Nick Anderson on the near side. Back to Helfer, he had a lane, now over to Ettingen. Beautiful deflection there by Peyton Smith, getting his stick in the passing lane. Play stopped right there. That was a beautiful play there by Peyton Smith. We know how much Gregory Ettingen goes for those one-timers. 
the helfer Ettingen connection very strong and Peyton Smith cut it off right there. When we have wording as to why, a ruling as to why that goal was taken off the board, we will deliver it to you. Nothing yet, however, as that one taken away and cleared by the aforementioned Peyton Smith. The in Pasquet have certainly been the MVPs for Purdue 15 minutes into this one. A minute 15 seconds left on the power play for Illinois, trying to avenge a possible goal number one that was called back. Joe Dorian, back to the point now, Atticus Helfer moves right. Now moving in, goes off his own man Bogdanoff. Now Tyler growing in a dangerous situation, but instead he chips it and doesn't bother to chase. Illinois unable to handle it here. That's been a weakness for them, clearing the puck. So far in this season, and the consequence of that here is that it kills more time on this power play. Atticus Helfer, long pass in, and a nice one there to Luke Alpe. He has to wait for his line mates to join him. Plays the ricochet game there, feeds it. Into that corner now, Matt Veev there. Back out to Harrison Slovic, moves right, fires, and that's why. Cleared again by Purdue. Illinois looking to work quickly here. Near side, Alexander Matviev gains the zone. Needs to get to a better angle here, though, as he's relegated to that near side corner to the midboard. Back to Matviev. And now that's Luke Alpi. Trades places with Sasha. Now Harrison Slovic. Now Illinois looks to get set. Back to Slovic. Back to Matviev. It's a play to get him in close. And a save made. As that one appeared to go high and on Kane Pasquet around the helmet. One second left on the minor. So the Boilermakers able to avenge that and they're able to kill off another power play that puts Illinois 0 for 2 on the man advantage here in the first period. That being said, still plenty of great hockey and plenty of beautiful feeds and shots in for Illinois thus far. They've had the slight advantage, you could rule, in this game. Back to that near side corner, a one on two. Illinois looks to clear, that's Bailey McCarthy. Goes around one man, but can't go around the next. Illinois crowding the middle, Matthew McDonald trying to hold on to that, no dice, second time around. A feed in, to the far side. Evan Spadafora gets it back into Franks. He's unable to send that behind the back. Harrison Slovic looking to clear, back to neutral ice. Who can be the first man to poke check it to his line mate? The answer, Purdue. Spadafora can't handle that, and he'll have to reset, backhanded into nobody. Instead, it is corralled by Nathan Dash. And before Dash can get that shot off, the call offside. Three minutes left here in this first period, although Purdue has still had some close chances in on Ben Mazurek. No official shots that have gone in on goal. They haven't It's been at that five number. The shot total for the Boilers has for quite a long time now. Illinois, meanwhile, with nine. And again, a beautiful feed from the two brothers, from Greg Ettingen to David Ettingen, but no dice as that goal was called back. Again, when we have word as to the official ruling from the linesman, we will pass it along. Since then, Purdue has been able to kill off another power play. And a face off now in neutral ice. All the way to the far side, chase down for it. Dash feeds it to Anthony Verasi. Controlling now, that's Jake Pickett. Pickett leads the charge. Picked off, however, and Bogdanoff controls for Illinois. Bogdanoff moving closer in. Looking for the wraparound, now looking for the centering pass as he goes all the way around. Illinois looking for the centering pass. Back out to Joe Dorian at the near side point. He loses it, however. Chase down for it between Dorian and Peyton Smith. Dorian has to be helped. Dangerous territory here for Illinois as they were outnumbered, but they get it back to neutral ice. Bogdanoff gets poked at from the rear. 50-50 puck battle for it. Pulled out to Purdue. Two minutes left in a scoreless first period. Moving on the far side, the Boilermakers are. Resetting, snow shower, beautiful feed in. Picked off, however, by Atticus Helfer. Poke check there. Can he clear it? Yes, he can. And a line change for Illinois. Oh. 
Saucer pass there from the Boilers. Justin Yang has his hands on it. Now Alexander Matviev moving the other way, fires right into the bread basket of Pasquet. He's been a busy man tonight and has responded appropriately. Face off now to Pasquet's left, pulled out by Purdue in the trapezoid. Gregory Ettingen and David Ettingen chasing after that one. Can Illinois keep it in? No, they cannot. They do control it, however, in neutral ice. A minute 30 left here in this scoreless first period as Harrison Slovic feeds that in around. David Ettingen trying to hold on to it. He cannot. And cleared back to neutral ice where Illinois will control again. All the line eye here in the last five to ten minutes. They slowly managed to pull in front in terms of the momentum battle and the ice time battle, time of possession battle here in this first period. David Ettingen fighting for it alongside Alexander Matviev. That does not go there. Tried to find Greg. David sends a man into the boards. Back to neutral ice off of Matviev. Now Purdue will control. 50 seconds left. Purdue looks to get a rush in. Wessel fires and wide. 50-50 puck battle there, that's four on two and it's pulled out to the four. Now the other way, Harrison Slovic, 30 seconds left as Slovic forced to the outside, trying to make his way all the way around. Instead feeds it back to the point, but feeds it right to Purdue. Dangerous territory here, two on one. Tyler Groen moving in, try to find the man in front. And a deflection right there by Anthony Verossi that saved a point blank chance from occurring. Bailey McCarthy tries to clear inside of 15 seconds. Over to Illinois. Too hot there for Peter Campisi. What a defensive play there by Anthony Verassi to deny that for Illinois. And that will do it for period number one. No, it will not. Seven tenths of a second later, and I would have been out of the clear, but instead we'll have a face off to officially round out period number one. But what a beautiful play that was by Anthony Barassi, really to deny Purdue's first chance right on the doorstep. Really their first chance at all in quite a long time. In on Ben Mazurik. But Illinois is not out of the woods yet. Again, seven tenths left on the clock in this first period. But the, the number that matters more, two minutes on the clock for Bailey McCarthy. He is in the penalty box for Illinois. So that will give Purdue a de facto power play to open up the second period as that ends that. So the Boilers will be on the power play, their first of the game, to open up period number two. Quite the whirlwind of a first period, however, as Illinois was able to neutralize, in the most part, the top line of Cole Theodore, Tyler Groen, and Will Torriani. For the Illini on the other side, it was a lot of quick work moving in and a lot of Two three-man hockey there, including some beautiful plays between Greg Ettingen and David Ettingen, including one that almost led to a first goal. When we have the ruling as to why that goal was, that possible goal was taken off the table, we will inform you. But for now, scoreless to end period number one. The shots 10 to five in favor of Illinois. And again, the Boilers will have a power play starting the second period. We will be back after this. In the meantime, the listeners on WPGU, we send it back to the studio.
a scoreless first period, but significant strides for Illinois. Faster play, cleaner play, less mishandlings of the puck. They cleared it in their own D zone. That didn't really rear its head, that problem in the first period. For Purdue, meanwhile, they were effectively silenced in that latter half of the first with the exception of one notable breakaway. So how do they get back into this game? What can they do to jumpstart their offense? Again, an offense that was relatively quiet, particularly that top line for the last 10 minutes of the first period. And the only reason that this is really still a tie game and that Purdue is on even terms is we finally have a reason for why that first goal was knocked off the board. It was a delay of game call on the netminder. Kane Pasquet knocked the goal post off its anchor right before the puck went in off the stick of David Ettingen. And that essentially cost his team two minutes, but whether or not he knew it, he effectively saved the goal. In retrospect, it was a pure trade-off. Do you want to be down one nothing or be forced to kill off two minutes? And ultimately that's a trade any goalie and team will take. So he saved the goal whether or not he realized it and Purdue right back on even terms despite getting figuratively shut out in the latter half of the first period. The shots still 10-5 to in favor of Illinois and they'll have some help. Again, Bailey McCarthy is in the box for the first two minutes of play to open up period number two. A man who was very present and very involved in that first period, Peyton Smith, on the ice and set to take the face off for the Boilers. Another man involved heavily, Evan Spadafora, to his left. Meanwhile, it's the second line for Illinois. Two defensemen, Alpi and Slovic, and the only two forwards, again, Ettingen and Matviev. Illinois on the penalty kill for the first time tonight. Let's see if the Boilers can strike as a way to jumpstart their offense. Now's a perfect time to do so. Who else? Will Torriani leading the way for Purdue through the open ice. Gains the zone, gets around two men, and will reset now. To the point. Playing catch with Torin Frank, now moving in. Fires off the pad, still alive, and drops in the slot. Able to be pulled out by Groen, back to Frank. Now Torriani on the near side. Holding onto it there. Torriani. Tried to find the man in the middle, could not. Matt Veeve tries to clear, but he fans on that. Still being fought for now and ultimately cleared by Illinois. A minute 19 left on the power play. Now taking that one and moving in is Tyler Groen. Gets it back to the point for Torriani. Swings it around. That's Frank. Top line on for now a minute for the Boilers here on this power play. Fighting for that one, Harrison Slovic. And he clears it. Line change for Illinois. And this top line still on the ice. This is a shift of about a minute 20 seconds so far for this Purdue top line. Torriani resetting, 40 seconds left on the power play. Feeds it across now, there he is, Evan Spadafora, able to get in, taken away from the back though by Atticus Helfer. And Purdue will reset again that's Matthew Wheeler with it. 25 seconds left on the man advantage. Fed into nobody. Chase down for it. Harrison Slovic looks to clear and does. Back to Atticus Helfer. He will kill some more time. Successful penalty kill for Illinois. And the trend of whose offense is getting shut out is continuing early here in the second period. Purdue able to bring it up, though. Has numbers. Fires. Still alive in front off the deflection and a save made. Now back the other way, moving in. That's Aiden Taylor able to make a few men miss, but the shot goes too high. Off the bench, feeding it back in. Dorian Taylor tried for the backhand, couldn't get one. Able to be fought back in there by Campisi, still able to hold on to it, deflected. Off the pad of Pasquet and a seam pass sent in. Dash fires and fans still in front, diving there, but unable to make anything happen. And after all that, it's now clear. Bailey McCarthy now on the near side for Illinois. As he goes to his bench, a man gets hit. And Illinois has to chase that one down. That's Dorian and Dash on defense. Abbreviated line change for Purdue as a man moves to his left. 
Atticus Helfer feeds it. Nice pass to Bogdanoff. He gets lambasted in the open ice. Purdue moving back the other way. That's Peyton Smith and a retaliatory move there. Purdue laying the boom here. Maybe that's a way they can get back into it is their physicality. But Illinois moving across. Atticus Helfer with a shake and bake. Unable to make anything happen there as that shot goes wide. Bogdanoff chasing for it. He manages to get it, but taken away from the rear and cleared by Purdue. Dan Wessel in the middle of that one for the Boilers. Now Nick Anderson, Illinois giving this Purdue defense no time to rest. Another saucer pass there, but getting hit, Peyton Smith. And Illinois making them pay for something that has worked well for them on the season. Chase down off the skate of Varasi. And now Nick Anderson chases it down. The Boilers are clearing it, but Illinois is going right back on the attack here early in the second period. Alex Leskai feeds it. Verossi a shot. Save made right there by Pasquet. And again, whether he knew it or not, Kane Pasquet effectively saved his team a goal by knocking the post off of its anchor. It incurred a two-minute delay of game penalty earlier in the first period, but... That's a trade-off any netminder will take, and the game remains scoreless. Now four minutes here into a quick-moving second period, much like its predecessor. Face-off being fought for, pulled out by Purdue. That's Matthew Wheeler, who will send it around. Fed in, trying to play the ricochet game, trying to get it there to Cole Theodore. Theodore's been quiet, mostly in this game. Again, Illinois has done a good job neutralizing that top line of the Boilers, who again had 50 goals coming into this game. David Ettingen moving in, undermanned, however. He's unable to make anything happen. Alexander Matviev hits a man on the boards. David Ettingen near there as well, along with Gregory. Sent back around to Wheeler. He looks to clear. Feeds a pass to the far side. Intermediate passing starting to become a factor here for Purdue as the shot goes wide off the stick of Will Torriani. Back the other way from Illinois, off the boiler line change. Luke Alpie resorted to the outside. Fires, does not go. Still alive. Ettingen a shot and a save made. Unable to handle that one right there, and it nearly cost Purdue a goal. Back the other way, Peyton Smith moving in, and the shot off the pad. Now Illinois looks to clear, and giving up a one-on-one -on -one chance there was David Ettingen, giving up a shift as well. Line change for Illinois, five minutes into period number two. Still scoreless. Trying to make a man miss there was Jake Pickett. Luke Alpi fighting for it alongside him. Alpi had it, sent it around the boards and a souvenir for a lucky fan in the first row. We talked about it coming into this game and we've mentioned it before that a litmus test for both teams is you struggle against the faster teams so you, you have to outpace the other guy and both teams have turned to their speed as a way to get active here early in this second period. It's given Purdue plenty of good chances in on Ben Mazurik. And you could argue it's the biggest component that has jump-started their offense the most here, five minutes into this second period. Face-off pulled out to the Boilers. Shot from the point off of an orange sweater. In the right place at the right time there was Patrick McDonough. Now Illinois clears it. McDonough chasing it down. Now Nathan Dash has to do the same for Illinois. Dash harassed right there by Dylan Franks. Illinois plays the ricochet game and gets it out there. That's Andrew McLean. Now Patrick McDonough fires it using the stick right there was Pasquet. Now McDonald has it back. Looking for an opening. Gets hit and a nice hit there to take away all options there by Dan Wessel. Illinois still has it in the trapezoid. A retaliatory hit there on Wessel. And cleared now but back the other way. Two on two. Moving in there, Spatafora fires too high. Rebound chance, the net dislodged as that one was still active in the trapezoid. Purdue slowly starting to get more active on the shots and right in front. So now a face off to the left of Ben Mazurik. Quick shot there off the faceoff. Caroms, too much traffic in the way there. Illinois looking to control, using the left side of his body to avoid one man there was Harrison Slovic. 
Now a one on two in the near side corner. Bailey McCarthy joins to help him. It goes into the trapezoid and it goes in front. But a black sweater there to say no, that was Will Torriani. Still being fought for in that near side corner. McCarthy there for Illinois. And pulled out all the way to the far side. Luke Alpi chases it down. McCarthy feeds it for a centering pass. Nobody there to receive. Back the other way, the Boilers go. A two on four. Torriani will feed it in too high. Tyler Groen, his line mate there, harassed by Luke Alpi. Sticks collide, but Purdue able to come up with it. A shot off the post right there. Still alive in front. Illinois looking for a clear. They can't get it. Tyler Groen still holding on to it. He gets lambasted by Alpi and Slovic as a centering pass. Play stopped, and this might be a penalty. Into the box, Harrison Slovic. Power play number two for Purdue. The call appears to be a cross check on the Illinois defenseman. So for the second time in this period, Purdue back on the attack and they have managed to turn things around already with plenty of shots in on Ben Mazurik. The top line out for both teams, a golden opportunity to get your offense active. Trying to clear it there was Ettingen. He creeped up past the faceoff line and it earned his team 10 seconds of penalty kill. There is Peyton Smith who feeds it in to an orange sweater. Dorian harassed by Tyler Groen as Purdue looks for a, a, a takeaway. That's Spatafora looking for an outlet. He gets it. Frank trying for the centering pass now, but they feed it back around in a chase down that might allow Illinois to clear it. Gregory Ettingen does. 30 seconds having ticked off the power play. Dangerous opportunity there is getting collided were Pasquet and Matt Vive. Matt Vive rushing back the other way as Pasquet able to send a pass around. Toriani and Matt Vive moving around there. Matt Vive very pesky and killing a lot of time single-handedly on this penalty kill for Illinois. Tyler Groen plays the ricochet game right to Luke Alpi, but he can't clear it. Toriani with him in the corner, still fighting for it. Illinois vindicated right there as Atticus Helfer pulls it out. They're moving shorthanded. Helfer killing some time. Feeds it in, tried to find Alexander Matt Vive. Not enough. English there. Back the other way now, Purdue a three on three, moving on the far side. That's Matthew Goring who will reset off the line change. Top line has played plenty of time on this for Purdue, but they get a rest now with the second line in. Dylan Franks will trade places with Matt Wheeler. Back to Franks at the point, unable to handle it there now, and a little bit of some sloppy play combined with staunch Illinois defense led by Sasha Matviv, killing time on this power play for Purdue. Illinois has kept the top line out there, led by Alpi and Matt Vive. Wheeler trot, thought about it, couldn't get one now. There's a chase down for it. Dylan Franks and Luke Alpi in the corner. Alpi sends a man down and a nice hit there. Can Purdue keep it in? No, they cannot. Three, two, one, and another penalty kill for Illinois. 11 minutes left in a very fast moving and still scoreless second period. Unable to handle that one right there was Dylan Franks. Chase down for it. Illinois looks to clear. Purdue surrounds them, however. That could have been dangerous, but Illinois is lucky it wasn't. Now the Illini moving quickly with numbers. Campisi around one man. Backhand chance doesn't go. Wide open net, but they can't get stick to puck right there. Pasquet was shaded so far to the far side. You have a guy right there. Off the carom, you have a goal. Nothing there, though, for Illinois. Ryan Kovitz moving back the other way. Purdue looking for some pressure, feeding it in. Back over to the point. Fires a lot of traffic in front. Illinois looks to clear, and they do. Great awareness here by Illinois this entire game to deny chances right in the slot, to deny rebounds. Purdue moving quickly, though, on the far side. Has a lane. Feed it back in for a shot. Still alive in front. Illinois again clears what could have been a rebound in the slot. Halfway down here. In the second period, still scoreless, but Purdue has managed to get their act together. Another centering pass, though, taken away by Gregory Ettingen. He gets sandwiched between two black sweaters. And now moving in there is Alexander Matviv, chip and chase, taking it, though, and moving in. 
On the far side, Gregory Ettingen, full body block right there by Dan Wessel to deny that chance. Matt Veeve still able to hold on to it, and now Dash will chase. Abbreviated line change for Illinois, Bogdan off into the game for Matt Veeve. Nick Anderson with a burst of speed on the near side. Tries to get it back towards the middle, instead he's relegated to the corner. Plays the long game, takes the scenic route, and Illinois back into that corner. Back to the point, Ettingen. Alfie can't handle it, chase down for it. Can Purdue clear? Yes, they can. Now David Ettingen moving in, has Bogdan off to his left, tried to get it to him, deflected, over to Gregory Ettingen now. He looks to reset, tried for a centering pass, good poke there by Wessel. Ettingen back to it, has David. David gets hit into the boards, able to give it away, however, to Greg. Over to Slovic, he fires, shot too high there. Alpi has to chase it down in the near side corner and gain possession. But Purdue able to clear it, and a man moving quickly. Who else? Bill Toriani with it. Sends it back to Groen, top line trying to get active for Purdue, and Illinois able to clear. That is an advantage that Purdue has had in this game is the physicality, is that puck ice. They've been the more physical team thus far, 31 minutes into this game. Franks and Bogdanoff on the dot to the right of Mazurik. Still in the dot there, Illinois looking to take it away. Nice help there from Anthony Varasi to spearhead that. Now Atticus Helfer with it. Has Varasi to his right, Helfer fires, and that will end up in the netting. Good defense right there from Purdue, forcing Atticus Helfer to his left, cutting off Anthony Varasi for what would have been a one on zero chance in the slot. If you're a fan of defensive hockey, this is a gold rush for defense in this game. This is your place to be as Anderson fires and wide. Backhand chance from Taylor. Couldn't get enough on it. He has it now. Feeds it over. McCarthy sidewinder. Still in front, still alive, and swallowed up there again by Kane Pasquet. Again, we talked about Pasquet coming into this game, a huge frame, 6'2", 200. He can do the splits practically. Or he doesn't have to do the splits, but he can cover that entire crease to crease just with his frame alone, very long. So he forces Illinois to elevate the puck. Illinois looking for a wraparound here. That's Peter Campisi back to Anderson. Can Anderson elevate it from the point? He fires, and that does not go. Taylor had the deflection, couldn't get it. Looking for a centering pass there. A man gets hit into the boards. Nick Anderson able to control on the near side. He fires. Great placement right there to deny that. Moving back the other way, Evan Spatafora. Poke check there from McCarthy. Will keep things in the Illinois zone. Line change for Illinois. Beautiful placement right there by Evan Spatafora on that last Illini shot. Purdue increasingly physical here. Returning the favor there, Alexander Matviev, but Purdue able to control. A shot in right into the breadbasket of Missouri. And if you're an Illinois fan, that last shot had you worried. Missouri was completely exposed and fully open, and that's a move you work on so much in practice, with coaches, with conditioning groups, just to close your legs that quickly. That was a quick shot, that was from a close distance, and that's a veteran move to save a goal there from Ben Missouri. Face off to his left, still being fought for, won by Alexander Matviev, sent all the way around and cleared. Scenic pass here from Dorian to Ettingen, two on two. He's unable to control that though. Great poke check there from Dan Wessel. Still being fought for, pulled out by Gregory Ettingen. Feeds it to David and a shot goes wide. Another one right there between the two brothers that nearly went for a goal. Peyton Smith moving back now. Purdue sidewinder doesn't go there. Nash Cheslock seeing his first ice time and making the most of it. Wheeler feeds it into Smith. Smith harassed by Dash, he's looking for an angle. Looking for some help, undermanned. We'll play the ricochet game and we'll get it to a man. Still being fought for in that near side corner, six minutes left 
on the ticker in this scoreless hockey game. Circling back, Alexander Matviev over to Nathan Dash. Line change for Purdue. Fought for on the near side. Trying to go around one man there, he could not, was William Maggart. And it's pulled into the Illinois trapezoid. Illinois having trouble clearing it in this situation here. David Ettingen harassed from behind, but now he can. Chip and chase there from the likes of Cole Theodore. Again, he's been quiet in this game. And another souvenir. Five and a half left on the ticker in period number two. A Purdue offense that was relatively quiet in the last half of the first period has come to life here with two power plays and a lot of quick shots. Another one there that is deflected, but again, still no score. Illinois looking to change that here. Moving on the other side, Anthony Verossi tried to feed it in, unable to handle that helfer. Passes it down, that one ends up on goal. And it appears to be stuck in the netting. Again, not the first time there have been conversations between Kane, Pasquet, and the linesman. Again, this would be a one to nothing game if not for the delay of game penalty caused by him. He knocked the goal post off its anchor before that shot from David Ettingen could go in. And whether or not he did it on purpose, whether or not he knew it, he saved his team a goal, and it's still scoreless. But fanning right there, Illinois with a chance, quickly taken away by Matthew Wheeler. Dangerous chance there, but Illinois able to keep it in. Slovak harassed, Bogdanoff plays the ricochet game, trying to look for a carom there. That's Bogdanoff in Helfer, along with Cole Theodore. Theodore is starting to make his presence felt as this second period goes on inside of five minutes of a scoreless hockey game. Dylan Franks pulls it out right in front, still being fought for in the slot. A few sticks cancel each other out. Great defense there from Illinois to prevent that centering pass as Verasi moves back. Looks for another man, will feed it around. Fresh off the bench, that's Nick Anderson. Has to circle back, give a man a snow shower. Back to the point, that's Peter Campisi who moves to his right. Campisi now going in, fires, deflection, still alive, and Karam's right. Quickly controlled by Purdue, back to the point. Looking to handle that is Alex Lesky. he fires, and that goes wide. Nick Anderson now looking to apply more pressure, but instead he's hammered into the boards. Chase down for it. Illinois can't keep it in the O zone, but they can control it. That's Alex Lesky with it. Now Illinois feeds it in, line change. Four minutes left in a scoreless period number two. Alexander Matviev turns things around. A one on four, can he do, make one of his signature moves and kill time to wait for his line mates to join him? He can, but he can't keep it in the O zone. And play stops. This might be two more minutes here for Illinois just based on the reaction from the Purdue bench. Yes it is. Alexander Matviev into the box. So Illinois has one of their best weapons and their best man on the face-offs sideline for the next two minutes. Third power play of the period for Purdue and a chance to notch this game's first goal onto the tally. Onto the ice, it's the top line. Again, led by Tyler Groen, joining him, Torin Frank, and the man in the circle right now, Peyton Smith as we will replay things there. Evan Spatafora there as well. It looks to be a mix of lines one and two. And quickly cleared by Greg Ettingen. We will keep our eyes on the Purdue bench for when that full top line comes into the game. Namely, Will Torriani. Three and a half left in period number two. Again, Matt Veeve in the box for two minutes for Illinois. Golden opportunity for Purdue. There's Torriani. Off the pad, and cleared by Ettingen. Line change for Illinois, 30 seconds into this power play. Second line in for the orange and blue. Toriani moving quickly, forced to the outside, looking for a better angle. He'll go all the way around, looking for a centering pass. Instead, he'll feed it back to the point. 
on the far side. That's Torian Frank looking to go in. Thought about it. Now Toriani on the far side. Toriani goes in. That was elevated. And it hit the net. Just the wrong kind of net. It goes out of play. Inside of three minutes, a minute ten left on the minor penalty to Sasha Matveev. Atticus Helfer and Peyton Smith in the circle to the left of Nolan Woodring. Face-off still being fought for. Karam's out to the point. A win for Purdue. To the near side, that's Evan Spatafora back to the point. Thought about going in, unable to handle that one, and that might cost his team possession there, and it does. That's one Will Torriani's going to have back, and it's safe to say it's the only mistake he's made tonight. Atticus Helfer has other ideas as he'll kill some more time. And an offside there, some pesky play there from Torriani. Helfer thought he could kill some more time. Two and a half left in a still scoreless hockey game here in period number two. 45 seconds left until Alexander Matviev is a free man. Purdue needs a, a five, 10 seconds of strong play here just to get set in their own O zone. Instead, it's Illinois winning the face off and they feed it back in. Chase down for it that will get Pasquet out of the net. He controls it again. So now 25 seconds left. Purdue needs some strong play here in the next few seconds to get set. Icing, however, will deny that and a shorthanded chance, a shorthanded face off that is, for Illinois. 22 seconds left. That might be it for the power play unless Purdue can win the faceoff. Great work. Again, three penalties. Not something John O'Pilka will be happy about, but these last two penalty kills for Illinois have been nothing but dynamite. Gregory Ettingen takes the face off to the left of Pasquet. Won by Illinois. Quick shot there from David Ettingen. And the save in the bread basket. Those two have been the greatest threats for Illinois in this game. The Ettingen brothers have. Purdue has other ideas. Toriani moving in. Save made. Still alive in front in the trapezoid. And now pulled out to the near side. Frank's moving in. Has to circle back and get it to the point. Matt Vive out of the box. Five on five. Shot fires. Does not go. Luke Alpe throws a man into the boards. Purdue able to keep it in the offensive zone for the time being. Illinois having trouble clearing the puck. Where have we heard that before on the season for the orange and blue? Chase down for it. Now that's Matt Wheeler opposing him, Gregory Ettingen. Wheeler and Jake Pickett, the D-man on for Purdue. David Ettingen getting pesky right there on the forecheck, trying to give his team the possession. He cannot. Lucas trying to hold on to it for Purdue. 50-50 puck battle. Pulled out to Alexander Matviev, and he moves back the other way. A three-on-two, becomes a three-on-three, -three, becomes a four-on-three. Matviev fires too high right there as a few men go down. Now Purdue moving back the other way. And that one caroms back to the other side. 50 seconds left. Still scoreless here in this second period as that one was iced. So now Purdue has managed to put things back on even terms. Again, they were silenced really in the last 10 minutes of the first period. They've gone from being in a hole to being on even ground with Illinois. So a positive sight for the Boilers, but it's essentially tabula rasa heading into the third period, unless Purdue can make something happen here in these 45 seconds. Kept in the offensive zone, that one dangles into the trapezoid. Still being fought for, possession goes to the Boilers. Back out, Wessel a shot, deflection, they score! And there it is! From dug in a hole, to even ground, to up. One goal against Illinois, 35 seconds left in period number two. Dan Wessel got the benefit of some screens and some deflections in the slot. 
as he fired that one at the wall and it stuck. A big goal there for Purdue to make things one nothing. on the tail end of the second. And two to, if it stands credited to him, some more icing on the cake for the defenseman. That'll be his first goal of the season. 20 seconds left, Atticus Helfer trying for a last ditch attempt before the horn sounds. Bogdan off, harassed, and the puck taken away. Purdue playing with some increased energy here as Bogdanov can't get stick the puck there. 10 seconds left, a man collides into the boards, chase down for it, Nick Anderson fighting for it for Illinois, he gets there, two seconds left however, as that one's in the trapezoid, nothing that Bogdanov can do. So a slow return to an even playing field for Purdue culminates in a goal, his first of the season. The defenseman, the Geneva, Illinois native, Dan Wessel, gets on the board from the far side point. And that's a little bit of a backbreaker for Illinois, but you're easily in contention. You're only down a goal. You've been in control for most of this game. So nothing you can't come back from with 20 minutes left of hockey. We'll send it back to the WPGU studios. Illini Hockey Network, we will see you for period number three shortly.
A slow ascent to the top for Purdue, culminating in a goal in that final minute of the second period. Dan Wessel with his first of the season, and Purdue has the advantage up 1-0, entering period number three. So the big task for Illinois, get one past a very staunch netminder, save 20 out of 20 tonight in Kane Pasquet. They've had plenty of chances to do so. They're right on that doorstep. They're in the, to use a football term, they're in the metaphorical red zone. They've been there so many times tonight. Played a much better game. They've cleaned up their game. They've received the intermediate pass as well for most of that first 40 minutes. They controlled a lot of the ice time and it was spent a lot on their side of the ice. So they're not doing very many things wrong. It's just about getting one back and they are down one goal entering this third period. As we ready ourselves for the final frame, 20 minutes of hockey with Illinois down one. How will they strike back? On the staunch defense of Purdue, led by the netminder, Kane Pasquet, Alexander Matviev wins that face off. On defense for Illinois, it's Slovic and Alpi. They find themselves moving back, opposing them. An increased forecheck for Purdue and probably an increased physicality as well as Gregory Ettingen feeds that one along. David Ettingen fighting for it, takes it away from Matt Wheeler. Tried for a sidewinder there, couldn't get one there. Gregory Ettingen feeds a man into the boards, however able to take that one, Torin Frank. He's met by a few orange sweaters, but now Purdue controlling. Looking to clear it and killing some time there is Cole Theodore and now Matt Wheeler. Tyler Groen sends that one on goal and bottled up by Missouri. Again, Illinois has had the advantage statistically for most of the time in this game. They do find themselves down one goal, however to open period number three. Face off in their own doghouse, pulled out to Atticus Helfer. Now Nathan Dash sends a pass across both seams to clear. Anthony Varasi gains the zone. Illinois can turn this into a quick possession, but Pope checked away. Beautiful play right there from Purdue to deny that. Sent on around a fight for it between Dorian and Toriani. Now to neutral ice and sent into the Illinois zone. Joe Dorian at the midboard, still fighting for it now. Pulled out to Theodore, back to Groen. Groen, now Toriani. The top line combining for some passes here. Can they get involved for Purdue? Illinois kept them quiet for the first 41 minutes. Nathan Dash chases that one down on the far side now and clears it back to Verossi. Two on two here for Illinois as both teams had a line change. Verossi fires off of a stick very early in the process and out of play. Now a face-off in Purdue's backyard to the right of Kane Pasquet. Check that to his left. Bailey McCarthy and Dylan Franks. One by the ladder, still being fought for. And cleared, chased down for it. This could be dangerous here for Illinois, but Nick Anderson with the backhand back to neutral ice. Still being fought for now. A few bodies cancel each other out, controlled by Purdue and fed in now to Nick Anderson for Illinois. He circles back, sends it around, plays the ricochet game there. Campisi can't handle it though now. Possession for Purdue. Aiden Taylor with a nice hit to delay that, but now Purdue gets it. Moving in for a shot. Save made off the glove. Illinois is lucky that didn't go past the blue paint. Still being fought for, fires too high into the netting and another souvenir. Only two minutes into this game and a lot of line changes for both teams. Only two minutes into this period, rather. And the trend continuing of a very quick game. Both teams making quick work of neutral ice and getting plenty of chances in on the other. Quick work there as David Ettingen moving in, feeds it back to Gregory, fires a shot too high into the netting again. Purdue getting in the right spots defensively as they're forcing a lot of deflections.
Face off one by Illinois. Matt Veeve in the circle there. Quick shot. Too far wide. Fight for it at the near side point. Joe Dorian gets hit into the boards. Purdue outnumbering Illinois in this 50-50 puck battle. And the Boilers ultimately win it. Fed on back around and cleared on the far side. Moving in there. That's Steven Lucas, but taken away by Sasha Matveev. He moves back the other way, feeds it to Joe Dorian, gains the zone, forced to the outside. He's looking to send it back to the middle. Collides with a few men there. That's a three-on-three -three puck battle there. Pulled out to Purdue. They're starting to win more of these 50-50 puck battles and pulled out to neutral ice. Chase down for it between Nathan Dash and Steven Lucas. One by Dash, but he's forced to the corner. He gets hit along the boards by Lucas. Illinois unable to clear for the time being. Back to the point. Firing a shot there is Frank, and that's why. David Ettingen looking to clear it now. He fans on it, but able to get it back for the time being. Line change for Illinois. Gregory Ettingen has to kill some time. Fresh into the game, Alec Bogdanoff able to avoid one man and send it in. Purdue controls in their own trapezoid, looking to clear the puck. Illinois making quick work on the forecheck there from Atticus Helfer. Gets it to Bogdanoff, but pass intercepted. And now Harrison Slovic controls in his own doghouse. Four and a half minutes into period number three. On the near side, moving quickly for Illinois. That's Anthony Verassi. Moves to his right, sends one in. Saved by Pasquet. Pulled out to the corner now. Back to Slovic. Fires a shot. Manages to get in. Rebound chance from Verassi. And a save made there by Pasquet. Beautiful one there. That one goes through two men. And back to Atticus Helfer. He might have a chance here, but fumbles that one. Back to Purdue. William Maggert moving around the boards, collides with one man, and that gives Illinois the possession. Verasi chips it in and doesn't bother to chase. Poke check there from Harrison Slovic gives Illinois the possession. Two on four. Atticus Helfer waits and feeds it to nobody. Bailey McCarthy trying to get it though. He might have a chance diving for that centering pass, but to a black sweater. It's still Illinois that's controlling, but Purdue's putting up a bigger fight in their own D zone. Matthew McDonald flips that one in and bottled up by Kane Pasquet. Face off, pulled out to Matt Veeve, pulled out to the point. Shot fired from Anderson. Caroms back into the trapezoid off the pad of Pasquet. The man goes into the boards. Purdue looking to clear. That's Toriani who feeds it back. They're still looking to clear now. A delayed clear here that might cost them the possession, and it does. David Ettingen has it now in the corner for Illinois. They're looking for a centering pass. Purdue converges on a man in the trapezoid very quickly. Trying to clear that one Cam Page, and he can, but play stopped. Frequent line changes for Illinois. John O'Pilko wants to keep his men as fresh as possible, perhaps. Five minutes into this third period, they're down a goal. Luke Alpi fires that, goes off of Atticus Helfer, and right to Tyler Groen. He clears it, beautiful feed over to Toriani. One-on-one -on -one chance, Toriani back, tried to find a man, could not. But back to Groen, is that one caromed off a few more. Purdue looking to get set now. Trying to feed it in, scene pass, goes to nobody. Caroms back. Onto the near side. Able to pull it out. Poke check there. Goes on goal. Turned aside. Still being fought for in the midboards. Now to the near side corner. Nathan Dash in the middle of it alongside Tyler Groen. Pulled out to Groen. A one on two. He wins that. Backhand chance. Still alive in front. Poked away by Missouri with the stick. Back to the point. Purdue controls. They send it back to Torin Frank on the near side. Now to Theodore. Back to the point, open lane, a shot, save made, playing out of the crease there was Missouri, going right to the puck to deny that chance. Atticus Helfer pokes it. That gets close, but controlled by Purdue. Another line change here for Illinois, saucer pass, a signature of these boilers, and play stopped. 
That one off the stick of the Illinois netminder. So things will now move back into Purdue's backyard. Kane Pasquet has been a busy man tonight, but he has responded and he has put out all of the flyers. Getting some help there from Matt Wheeler and a nice pass across, stopping that with the skate and a shot from Franks. Does not go off the glove. A man gets shoved into the boards. Peter Campisi able to go around one black sweater, feed it across there to Matthew McDonald. He has to chase after it. McDonald goes into the boards. He gets hammered there. Illinois looking for an outlet. They can't get one. Possession to Purdue. Pass too hot to handle there for Jackson Graff. Illinois looking to clear it. They're taking more time clearing the puck. Not exactly the best sign you want to see, but they get it out here. McCarthy. McDonald. Score! They were patient for a reason right there, clearing the puck. Bailey McCarthy and Matthew McDonald combined. And what did we talk about? The big frame Pasquet, Illinois would have to get the puck elevated. And that's exactly what Matthew McDonald did. Six and a half into period number three. They have tied this game. Beautiful two-man game there, we talked about it. This game, a lot of great strides from Illinois in the first two periods. A cleaner game, a faster game. They were receiving passes much better. They weren't fumbling passes, their stick play was much improved. And that time, it paid off. Beautiful two-man hockey from Bailey McCarthy and Matthew McDonald. 13-12 left on the ticker and we have a tie game. Bailey McCarthy, since joining this team two weeks into the season, has been such a spark plug for Illinois. He, he knows what to do to get the offense going. He's shown that in the season, and it showed there. Illinois has tied it up. They're looking to go back on the accelerator here, back to the point. That's Nick Anderson, goes back to the midboards. Now a man in the corner, feeding it out. David Ettingen elevates one, but too much, and out of play. And another trend, too, for Illinois, although they have improved their set play tonight, most of their goals on the season have come from the quote-unquote transition hockey. The odd man rushes at times this season in some of their tougher games. It's been the only way they've been able to get shots off. As a face-off there, taken away by Tyler Groen, moving to his right, trying to go around one man, restrained by Joe Dorian. Purdue wants a penalty, and they will not get one there, as Dorian very physical on the Indiana native Groen. Joe Dorian controls in his own trapezoid, met by a man. Pass taken away now for Torian Frank at Purdue has numbers. Kept to the outside, tried to feed it to a man. Right to an orange sweater though, that's Alexander Matviev responding. Three on three here for Illinois. David Ettingen gets it from Gregory. Too much traffic however, and cleared by Purdue. Moving quickly back in, Harrison Slovic fires a shot and off the boards. Sent on around from Matt Wheeler as Purdue looks to clear. Now Alpi's turn. And back the other way now, that's Alec Bogdanoff. Bogdanoff fires, save off the pad of Pasquet. Into the near side corner, still being fought for now and pulled out through the trapezoid. Chasing after that one is Jackson Graff. Luke Alpi joins him in the fray. Three on two puck battle there on the far side. Still being fought for now. Is joining the fray there and grabbing that puck, Peyton Smith. That one caroms off one man back to Harrison Slovic. Sent around and swung around to the far side for Luke Alpi. 
He feeds that one in. That one goes off the rear of the linesman. Nothing Illinois can do there on that break, though. It's controlled for the time being by Purdue. Pesky, however, that time is Anthony Verossi trying to give Illinois the possession. Still being fought for. Another 50-50 puck battle on that far side. This time it's two on two. Pulled out again to Peyton Smith. Sent in there by Nick Anderson and wide. Joe Dorian goes to chase that one down. McDonald joining him as two men converge by the Purdue bench. Line change there for Illinois. Torin Frank has it. He moves in. Has a shot fired there and out of play. We want to remind you as we're at the top of the hour that you're listening to WPGU 107.1, Champagne's Alternative, here on Illini Hockey Night this Friday, December 1st, 2023. Our thanks to Colin McCarthy and the WPGU team in the studio for providing the simulcast alongside the Illini Hockey Network for tonight's game. Again, if you're just joining us, Illinois has managed to tie things up as we're at the midway point of the third period. One to one, the Illini have gotten one back. As the linesman trips and that gets a laugh from the crowd. As a chase down there, Cam Page has it on the other side. Man gets hit along the boards. Illinois looking to control on the near side. Sent back out around now. Nick Anderson has to chase that one down. Icing waved off. Harrison Slovic. Again, Illinois has been a little bit slower in this third period to clear the puck. If you had to nitpick, that's something that might lead to the reemergence of their greatest weakness on the season, which has been that puck clearing. Hasn't been a problem thus far in this game, however but still something to watch going forward as that caroms off a few sticks. A few players cancel each other out. Now Nick Anderson on the near side, avoids one man, able to clear it, back into the Purdue zone, and the near side corner, pulled out. Illinois looking for a centering pass. Anderson had one, but a poke check right there from Purdue. Beautiful play there to deny that chance from Dylan Franks as the Boilers now control. Nine minutes left in a one-to-one -one tie game. Sent around, a few men collide. A stickless Nick Anderson tries to deny that. The puck is on top of him. And he may have drawn a cross check. Nick Anderson's stick broke in half. So he dives onto the puck to at the very least try and clear it. It started by trying to bat it away with his hands. Then it ends up on his chest. And trying to get him off of that was Evan Spadafora, but that cross check cost him two minutes and a power play for Illinois. The first penalty for Purdue in 30 minutes of ice time. And John Opilka will talk things over. As will Peyton Smith with the linesman. Again, no Benjamin Toby or Zane Burnside tonight for the Boilers, but again, still an electric top line that Illinois has managed to silence tonight. Peyton Smith alongside Kane Pasquet have been the two MVPs for Purdue in this game. And Pasquet will be tested again. See if he can continue his perfect night. Illinois on the power play for two minutes. Onto the ice for the Illini, it's Anderson, Dorian, Gregory Ettingen, Atticus Helfer, and Alec Bogdanoff. This is a pivotal two minutes to impact the momentum and to find how the last nine minutes of this game will go. Illinois looking to return to how it was pretty much for the first half of this game with a lot of time spent on their side of the ice. Purdue managed to claw back with a goal late in the second, and Illinois has responded with one here in the third. They look to add one more. Helfer fires. Dorian screen couldn't impact that right there. Nick Anderson back to Atticus Helfer at the point. Over to Nick Anderson at the midboards. Now in that corner. Seen pass. Gregory Ettingen has to reset off the skate. Helfer, Anderson, they're swinging it around. Anderson backs up now. Illinois in the 1-3-1 with Bogdan off the man in the middle. Now back to Anderson. Helfer fans on that, and Purdue able to clear it. Who else? It's Peyton Smith. He has been all over this game tonight for Purdue. 
40 seconds into this power play for Illinois. Back out to Gregory Ettingen. He looks to get reset. Thought about circling back. Now he'll head closer to the point. And there he is again, Peyton Smith, getting his mitt into the passing lane right there. Purdue controls, line change for Illinois. What a present Smith has been tonight for the Boilermakers. Halfway down here in the power play, eight minutes left in a tied hockey game. Alexander Matviev on the near side. Slovic avoids one man, gains the zone, has a man to his right and a few to his left. Feeds it to the right to David Ettingen. Trades places now. David Ettingen looking for a man there. Feeds it into Alexander Matviev. Matviev thought about it, diving to prevent against that shot there was Theodore. Matviev back with it. Doesn't show the shot there and Theodore doesn't dive. Now will he go in instead he passes it. Back there, Theodore responds, not once, but twice, and he's able to clear it. He's a man too who started out quiet but has managed to see his stock increase throughout this game. The Massachusetts native Cole Theodore, part of this top line, this electric top line for the Purdue Boilermakers. Last gasp on the power play here for Illinois. David Ettingen has it taken away, and Purdue able to clear it once again. Five on five, seven minutes left in a tie battle between these two rivals. Joe Dorian now. Tyler Groen trying to raise hell. And Ben Mazurik doesn't like that either. Groen tr maybe trying to get under Mazurik's skin right there. Maybe watch some Draymond Green before tonight, perhaps. Has a hit along the boards. Illinois trying to feed that one in. It's intercepted by a black sweater, but now controlled to the point. Dash a shot. A lot of bodies in front, and one of them stopped it. Back to Dash at the point. He fires again. And a glove save there from Pasquet. Six minutes, 14 seconds left. The shots, 25 to 22 in favor of Illinois. But again, Kane Pasquet has been perfect tonight for the Boilermakers. Bailey McCarthy to take the face off for Illinois. It's won by Franks. Still being fought for, however, in the trapezoid. Is Illinois looking to control? They cannot. And it's cleared. And iced as well. So now the battle, as it's a tie game with six minutes left, becomes one of who can control the ice time? Who can spend more time on their end of the ice? It's as true as it is obvious that you just keep it in your own ozone and good things will happen. That is the de facto litmus test as we round out regulation. We get close to rounding out regulation, that is. Illinois looking to work quickly there, chipping that one in is Peter Campisi. Chase down for it, Cam Page has it. Page looking to clear, nice pass over to Matthew Goring. Taken away by Harrison Slovic of Illinois. Matthew McDonald, the goal scorer for the Illini tonight, moving on the near side, harassed by Goring and fed into the boards as he had to give that puck away. Line change for Illinois. Purdue has it on the near side, gains the zone, and feeds it in before getting hit. That was Cam Page. Alec Bogdanoff there for Illinois as it's sent back to the point. They're able to clear it, but feed it to nobody there. And now a chase down there between Peyton Smith and Anthony Verossi. Smith boxes out Verossi and able to gain it with the puck. Again, he's been the MVP outside of the crease tonight for Purdue. Now controlling that, Ryan Kovitz. Poke check back in by Illinois, but nobody there to receive it. Five minutes left, and we're still tied. Barassi harassing a man on the near side. Kovitz joins the fray. Another 50-50 puck battle on the near boards, near the half wall. Still being fought for. Pulled out now. Helfer still has it. Dash, fires wide. And nobody there to receive the carom. Controlled by Purdue and cleared. Kovitz tried to get it past Dorian. Deflected back to him. 50-50 puck battle. That's a three on one, one by Illinois. Kept alive for the time being by Jackson Graff, still being fought for, pulled out to Joe Dorian on the near side. His turn to try and get Illinois set in the O zone. Instead, he feeds it to nobody. Line change right there. Four minutes, 10 seconds left. 
Purdue slow to clear the puck. That gives Illinois the possession. A shot, save made, still in front and bottled up. Save 28 for Kane Pasquet. And you can imagine John Opilka, we talked about it entering the first, entering the first minutes of this period as the faceoff still being fought for, pulled out to the corner. A lot of quick line changes for Illinois. You have to imagine that was designed so that the top line could spend a lot of time on the ice late in this third period. The strategy has indeed proceed as planned for John Opilka as this top line has spent a long time on the ice. Here in the latter half of the third period, taken away by one of those men, Gregory Ettingen, who fires and a save made by Pasquet. Into that near side corner, three and a half minutes left. Pulled out by the Boilers, they look to clear. Taken away, but in neutral ice, David Ettingen, Illinois has to tag up. Ettingen harassed, a one on two, and the puck goes back to Purdue. Can Matt Vive cut them off? Still being fought for. Matt Vive, very pesky, the Illinois Probably the peskiest player Illinois has on the forecheck, but nothing he could do there. Illinois will reset. Nathan Dash joined alongside Joe Dorian. Dorian has it now. Gains the zone. Tries to go around one man, cannot. Karam's into the trapezoid. Matt Vive there to pick it away. Matt Vive, pass to McDonald, couldn't handle it. And McDonald took away a golden opportunity there. Back the other way now, and the shot does not go from Matthew Goring. Matthew McDonald fighting for it. Campisi takes it away. The puck caroms back into neutral ice. Inside of two and a half minutes, one to one. Here in regulation, icing. Face off back in the Illinois zone and what a relief there for Purdue. They have a chance to get set offensively. This has been a very fast game. Both teams have had their chances on the opposing netminder. And both netminders in turn have played great games and re have received help from their defense in the slot and around the crease. It has been a defensive game at heart. Slovic wins that face off and clears it around. Matthew McDonald now trying to intercept that before it gets to a black sweater, but Jake Pickett has it. That gets close to the goal, but controlled by Purdue. And cleared. The signature saucer pass. Gaining the zone now on the near side. Evan Spatafora harassed. Pulled out closer now towards the middle. Still being fought for in that corner, however. Matthew Goring takes a tumble. Shot fired by Pickett. No dice. Taken away, though, by a black sweater now. That's Evan Spatafora and sent back to the point. A shot in, having to get high right there to deflect that was Bailey McCarthy. Purdue still able to keep it in as play is stopped. One minute and 40 seconds left. Line change for Illinois and one as well for the Boilermakers. Well, that top line has spent a long time onto the ice for Illinois particularly in the latter half of this third period. Now for the forwards, it's Dorian, Helfer, and Verasi. Pulled out to Nick Anderson. He moves to his right, chips it in. Says a prayer, caroms around the trapezoid, Purdue's the first to get there. Will Toriani working on that, Bogdanov trying to take it away. Still in the Illinois zone, but a whole sheet of ice open for Purdue to clear it. A minute, 20 seconds left. In regulation, and the game's still tied. Atticus Helfer bats that one down. Back to Purdue now. They have to get it out, and they do. Taking that one, moving with a burst of speed, Dan Wessel. He fires a shot, and it's wide. Illinois chases that one. Atticus Helfer looking to clear it, and does. Right back to Purdue. One minute remaining in regulation. Toriani feeds that one in. Line change for the Boilers. Helfer. To the far side, Matt Viv into nobody. Still being fought for, it's still in the slot. Matt Viv nearly had a chance on that. Chase down now between Wheeler and Verasi. Still being fought for, 35 seconds left in regulation and cleared. 
Luke Alpi there for Illinois, trying to reset quickly. Slovic now has it, 25 seconds left. Last shift of regulation for Illinois, and that was a brutal mistake there. Or was it? No icing called, Illinois catches a break. Purdue on the near side, trying to go around one man there was Peyton Smith, still fighting for it. Caroms around a goal, but it does not go, and sent back to the point. Eight seconds left in regulation. Spatafora holding on to that. Two on one puck battle, but pulled out to the Boilers. Harassed on the outside there, trying to get it back to the point. But before a collision there that has David Ettingen not happy, the horn sounds overtime here on this first day of December. So now as it goes from five on five to three on three, again, the question of speed and chemistry come into play. And both teams have done very well with the speed in this game. Purdue has shown it off, not just with their saucer passes, but with some individual plays by, in particular, Toriani and Wessel. You could throw Peyton Smith onto that list as well to avoid men in neutral ice. Meanwhile, Illinois has again played much quicker tonight and they have a chance to cater to their strength of transition hockey, quote unquote. You saw it in the goal between Bailey McCarthy and Matthew McDonald. So again, now it's three on three and you have a golden opportunity to show off that transition hockey if you're Illinois. Kane Pasquet has only let one get by him and again, it was elevated. A big frame, 6'2", 200, a long reach with the lower body and can cover end to end of the crease. So he has forced Illinois to elevate pucks tonight. He has barely had to move the pads when pucks have been low. And again, we hearken back to a what if of this game, whether accidentally or on purpose, he dislodged the net, forced a delay of game penalty and saved his team a goal in the middle of that first period. So another what if to hearken on as we begin this five on five overtime period. Nick Anderson, Atticus Helfer, and Alec Bogdanoff on the ice for Illinois. Tyler Groen, Will Toriani, and Matthew Wheeler there for Purdue. What a better way to begin rivalry weekend than with an overtime period. Nick Anderson moves in quickly. Helfer, right on the doorstep. Save made there by Pasquet. Still alive in front, controlled by Purdue. Slowing the pace down right there, and that's key, is Will Toriani. Purdue is playing much slower here. That appears to be a litmus test right off the bat, the pace control. We talked about the speed, but Purdue is playing slower to start this overtime period. So will Illinois push the pace? And will Purdue continue to slow down? That's something to be aware of right away as they get into a set formation. Wheeler moving in, tried for the pass, couldn't get one there. A few sticks cancel each other out. Atticus Helfer converges on that. And now it's his turn to slow things down, although Nick Anderson does want to play quicker. You could see it there from Helfer and Anderson calling for it. Line change there, an abbreviated change. Now David Ettingen slowing things down for Illinois. Abbreviated line change for Purdue, and now Illinois speeds things up. Perhaps smelling blood. Slovic, forced to the outside, a one-on-two, feeds it back to David Ettingen. Looks to move back to his left, has his brother Greg. Gregory Ettingen, turning things around, moving to his left. Tried to find David, now going in, thought about a wraparound chance. He will fire, rebound chance, goes wide from Harrison Slovic. And a chase down now for David Ettingen. Three and a half left in the overtime period. Another line change for the Boilermakers. Torin Frank opposing Gregory Ettingen. 15 on 15 as Ettingen gains the zone. Moves to his left. Thought about the wraparound again. Frank will deny him that and get very pesky into the boards. Ettingen still able to control it now. Looks for an outlet. Back to the point. Unable to handle that one is brother David. And Illinois has to tag up. Three minutes left in the overtime period. Sasha Matviv comes in for Gregory Ettingen. It's Frank, Smith, and Franks on the ice for Purdue right now. Matt Viva unable to go around one man. Thought he was tripped, didn't get the call. Barassi still trying to hold on to it. Two against one, he's outnumbered. Purdue controls. 
Still, he's harassing Torin Frank in the near side corner. Still being fought for. And that swings all the way around. Can Dylan Franks control it? He's harassed by Nathan Dash. Still being fought for. Franks has it. Sends a backhand around that will allow the possession to go to Purdue. Torin Franks with it now. And Purdue controls. Two minutes, 15 seconds left in the overtime. Taking that one now, Peyton Smith. The MVP outside of the crease for this game for sure for the Purdue Boilermakers. Ogdenoff getting pesky on the four check, trying to take it away. Smith will instead feed it around, play the ricochet game, and he wins that battle. Jake Pickett takes it, but kept to the outside. Tried to find Evan Spadafora, sidewinder, attempt to clear there, and he is able to clear it. That's Nathan Dash with numbers. Dash moves to his right, looks to reset in the set offense. Thought about finding Bogdanoff, instead he'll move all the way to the left. Dash now looking for an outlet, moves to his left, towards the half wall. Illinois shading that far side of the ice. Now Bogdanoff, back to Dash. A minute 30 left in the overtime. Dash moving around, fires, save made, and frozen. So both teams have had their fair share of chances in this overtime period. Illinois started out quick, and then they slowed things down. And we've seen many teams with that strategy. You can afford to slow down when you have three on three. You can, you can really afford to go either way. You can speed it up or you can slow it down because you have more ice. Caters to strengths and it makes the overtime very interesting. Ettingen tried for a centering pass, couldn't get one there. Still being fought for, pulled out now to the far side. Trying to go right back in is Nick Anderson. Tried to go around one man there, could not. Now Purdue takes it back with numbers, feeding it into Will Torriani. Toriani tries to go around. David Ettingen fires there. He scores! Better late than never. And the top line gets activated from Purdue. They win this game. It's the leading goal scorer, Will Toriani, with his 18th of the season. With 57 seconds left in the overtime period. Toriani puts it away. An interesting sequence there, Purdue, giving their rivals some dirty looks as they left the ice right there. That was a very interesting sequence right there. Perhaps some bulletin board material for tomorrow night's game when these two will meet in the same time, in the same location. But what a goal there from Toriani, took it himself. and. You could tell Nick Anderson, as he was trying to go in there, he tried to take it himself. He tried to do too much, you could say. That's one he's gonna watch and film, and that's one Nick Anderson's gonna wanna have back on the other side. He tried to do too much. It was taken away by two players. He forced a one on two, which is not the situation you wanna be in, especially in overtime. And Matthew Wheeler was able to take it away before Will Toriani's speed just got him past David Ettingen before sending the backhand below the shoulder of Ben Mazurik. Tough loss for Illinois tonight in a game where they made so many strides towards progress. A much cleaner game. Purdue just, just outdid them when it comes to the speed in that overtime period. And what an absolute beauty of a game from Kane Pasquet. 29 saves on 30 shots. And so many of those were when he was screened, when he had traffic in front, so many of them were so quick and right in front, and just his ability to move very quickly. I don't know how many goals he saved tonight for Purdue. A defensive-minded game as well. Both teams had a lot of help from their defense in the middle of the ice. It was a quick game and a very entertaining game at that. To round things out again, the goals from Dan Wessel, Matthew McDonald for Illinois, and then to close things out in the overtime period, it's William Torriani, the Montreal, Quebec native, with his 18th of the season, leading the team in points and goals. It took 64 minutes for that top line to get active to put their mark on this game, but it ultimately made the difference. For the Illini Hockey Network viewers, we say so long and see you tomorrow night. For the WPGU 107.1 listeners, we send it back to your usual programming and to Colin McCarthy, 
in the studio. For all of our broadcasting crew, this is George Corey saying until next time, we'll see you tomorrow night.